In Jim Crow America, when segregation was law and black excellence was supposed to be impossible, a young man from Illinois shattered racial barriers so completely that the most powerful institutions in America had no choice but to build their technological future on his genius, even while actively keeping him out of their buildings. Princeton University literally refused to let him attend lectures because he was black so he became so brilliant that decades later, the entire world uses his mathematical theories without knowing his name. His name was Dr. David Harold Blackwell. And this is how one black mathematician's mind shaped modern warfare strategy, revolutionized artificial intelligence, and proved that genius has no color. David Harold Blackwell was born on April 24, 1919 in Centralia, Illinois, a railroad town on the Mason-Dixon Line. His father, Grover Blackwell, maintained locomotives for the Illinois Central Railroad. His mother, Mabel Johnson Blackwell, raised four children in a household that demanded hard work and high expectations despite limited money. From his first days in elementary school, David understood numbers better than most adults understood English. Math was pure logic where skin color meant nothing, where a problem only cared if your answer was right or wrong. His teachers promoted him twice, skipping him ahead while other kids his age struggled with basic multiplication. Centralia had three elementary schools, one for white kids, one for black kids, and one integrated. David attended the integrated school, which meant he didn't fully understand how racist Southern Illinois was until later. High school changed everything when he met Caroline Luther, who taught geometry. He didn't care much for algebra or trigonometry, but geometry captivated him with its concept of helping line, a single strategic line that could make an impossible problem solvable. He joined the math club, solved problems from School Science and Mathematics magazine, and got his name published. At 16, David graduated high school wanting to become an elementary school teacher. That was his ceiling in 1935 because black kids were told they could teach at black schools if they were lucky, but his professors at the University of Illinois saw more. They pushed him to pursue graduate work. He earned his bachelor's in 1938, his master's in 1939, and his PhD in 1941 at just 22 years old. His dissertation on Markov chains was brilliant work that typically takes years longer. David became the seventh African-American in U.S. history to earn a Ph.D. in mathematics. He received a prestigious Rosenwald postdoctoral fellowship at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey, one of the most elite academic institutions on earth where Einstein, Gödel, and von Neumann worked. Members of the institute automatically became visiting fellows of Princeton University. Everyone got this designation automatically, everyone except David. When Princeton's president discovered the institute was listing a black man as a fellow, he objected that they were abusing the university's hospitality. Princeton refused to let David attend lectures, blocked him from research facilities, and tried denying him basic privileges every other fellow received automatically. David's thesis advisor, Joseph Dube, fought behind the scenes just to get David library access. David didn't even know most of this was happening because he was focused on his research. He only discovered years later how hard they'd tried to exclude him. John von Neumann, the legendary mathematician considered the father of game theory, requested a meeting after reading David's dissertation. David thought it was a joke. He couldn't believe someone that famous would care about a young black graduate student's work. When they finally met, David explained his thesis for 10 minutes. Then, in David's words, he listened for 10 minutes and then he started telling me about my thesis. Von Neumann understood David's work so deeply in 10 minutes that he could explain it back with additional insights. After his fellowship ended in 1942, David sent out 105 job applications, all to historically black colleges because he understood the reality. Black professors could only teach at black colleges. But there was one exception. Gerzy Neyman, a renowned statistician at UC Berkeley, interviewed David and supported his appointment. The mathematics department head, Griffith C. Evans, initially agreed and convinced the university president to hire him. David was about to make history at one of the most prestigious public universities in America. Then Evans went home and told his wife. She said she wouldn't have any darkie in her house. It was customary for the department head and his wife to host new faculty for dinner. Because this woman refused to allow a black man in her house, the job offer vanished. David took a position at Southern University in Baton Rouge in 1942, then Clark College in Atlanta, and finally Howard University in Washington, D.C. in 1944. Howard was the pinnacle for black academics. By 1947, just three years after joining, he was promoted to full professor and became head of the mathematics department. He developed what became the Rue Blackwell Theorem, a method for improving statistical estimates that every statistics student still learns today. 
In 1945, David attended a lecture by statistician Abraham Gershik from the Department of Agriculture. Gershik made a claim David thought was wrong. David went home, worked out a counterexample, and mailed it to him. David's counterexample was actually incorrect, but instead of dismissing it, Gershik called and invited him to lunch. That lunch became a friendship. That friendship became a collaboration that changed David's career. From 1948 to 1950, David spent summers at the Rand Corporation in Santa Monica, California, a government-funded think tank working with the U.S. military on Cold War strategy. David worked on game theory studying mathematical duels. Two people walk toward each other with loaded pistols. Each can fire any time. Fire too early, you'll probably miss. Wait too long, your opponent shoots first. What's the optimal moment to pull the trigger? During the Cold War, these weren't academic puzzles. These were models for nuclear deterrence, for understanding how nations behave when mutual destruction is possible. David helped the U.S. government understand decisions when millions of lives hung in the balance. In 1954, he and Gershik published Theory of Games and Statistical Decisions, offering the first rigorous mathematical treatment of statistics through game theory. That book is still taught today, still fundamental to how we think about decision-making under uncertainty. Here's the irony. The U.S. government had denied David security clearance earlier because of his race. The National Defense Research Committee blocked him from classified information because they didn't trust a black man with government secrets. But David didn't need their secrets. His mind was sharp enough to figure out what problems they were solving without seeing classified documents. He developed the mathematics behind their military strategies. He created frameworks for decision theory and Bayesian statistics that the government later used in military planning, economic forecasting, and intelligence operations. They locked him out, so he built the blueprints from outside. Then they used his blueprints anyway. In 1954, UC Berkeley called again. Twelve years after the department head's wife blocked his hiring, the university invited David as a visiting professor. In 1955, he became a full professor in Berkeley's new Department of Statistics, making him the first African-American to receive tenure at UC Berkeley. The first black tenured professor at any major public university outside historically black institutions. In 1955, the same year Rosa Parks refused to give up her bus seat, David Blackwell stood before white students at one of the world's most prestigious universities teaching advanced mathematics at the highest level. He became chairman of the statistics department in 1957. He supervised over 65 PhD students. He published over 90 papers on dynamic programming, game theory, and mathematical statistics. His office door stayed open. His classroom became a place where race dissolved and only ideas mattered. What made David dangerous to racist myths was his humility. He didn't brag or use his genius as a weapon. In a 1983 interview, he said, Basically, I'm not interested in doing research and I never have been. I'm interested in understanding, which is quite a different thing. Not achievement for achievement's sake. Just the pure joy of understanding how things work. In 1965, David became the first African-American elected to the National Academy of Sciences, one of the most exclusive scientific organizations in the world. For over a century, it had been an ivory tower of racial exclusivity. Now they had to acknowledge that excellence came in many colors. David's work became foundational to entire fields. Dynamic programming is used today in finance, robotics, AI training, and genome analysis. The Renewal Theorem is applied across engineering. The Rue Blackwell Theorem is fundamental in statistics. His information theory work influenced communication systems and data compression. His probability theory shaped algorithms powering search engines and recommendation systems. Today in 2024, the AI revolution is powered by mathematics David helped create. Machine learning uses Bayesian statistics. AI decision-making uses game theory, optimization techniques behind GPS, trading algorithms, and medical diagnostics trace directly to work David and colleagues pioneered. In March 2024, NVIDIA announced its Blackwell GPU architecture, naming its revolutionary AI chip after David Blackwell. This GPU trains the massive AI models changing civilization. It bears the name of a man once told he couldn't attend Princeton lectures because he was black. The Pentagon uses algorithms based on his work. Silicon Valley trains AI with methods he developed. Tech companies worth trillions rely on mathematics he created. For decades, most people using these systems had no idea who David Blackwell was. He was the ghost in the machine the black mind behind the white mask of American scientific progress. David retired from Berkeley in 1988 at 70 but kept showing up, thinking, teaching, loving mathematics like he had since childhood. 
He died on July 8, 2010 at 91 from stroke complications. In 2012, President Obama posthumously awarded him the National Medal of Science. David married Anne Madison in 1944 and they had eight children. He lived through the Great Depression, World War II, the Cold War, the Civil Rights Movement, and the Digital Age. He watched America change slowly and painfully but never became bitter. He never demanded apologies from Princeton, Berkeley, or government agencies that wronged him. He just kept working, teaching, understanding. David didn't defeat racism by being angry or protesting. He defeated it by being undeniable. He made contributions so significant they couldn't be ignored or erased. He trained students who trained more students. He published papers that other papers cited. He built frameworks that other frameworks were built upon until he'd constructed a legacy too solid to tear down. There's a Blackwell Hall at UC Berkeley now. The Blackwell Takia Prize honors mathematicians exemplifying his spirit. The Mathematical Association of America hosts an annual David Blackwell Lecture. His name is attached to theorems and concepts that students worldwide learn without knowing the full story. The next time you use GPS calculating your route, that's dynamic programming. When a doctor uses statistical models for treatment plans, that's Bayesian methods. When AI makes decisions, that's game theory and information theory. Somewhere in all that mathematics is a piece of David Blackwell, a young black kid from Centralia, Illinois who loved geometry and refused to let skin color limit his mind. They locked him out of Princeton because he was black. They told him he couldn't teach at Berkeley because a white woman wouldn't have him in her house. They denied him security clearance because the government didn't trust black people. David responded by becoming so brilliant they had no choice but to use his work anyway. He didn't outsmart the US government by stealing secrets. He outsmarted them by being smarter than their secrets. He decoded the mathematics they were trying to solve. He built the theories they needed. He laid the foundations for their entire technological future. And he did it while they actively tried keeping him out. That's what human potential looks like when it refuses to accept imposed limits. That's how one man's quiet genius became more powerful than a nation's loudest racism. That's a story that deserves to be told until everyone knows the name David Harold Blackwell.